All right. Well, Happy New Year to all. Here we are picking up where we left off. It seems like a long time ago since we're all together. And for me, it was a very welcome break. It was nice where with all this fiscal cliff controversy debate going on, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to really back out, close down virtually most all of my trades. They, they were kind of wrapping up for the most part anyway. And thought, I just don't want to have any of this looming over me during the, the break. I wanted to enjoy the time off. And uh, while we certainly did have I think, some pretty significant movement around all that once it was quote-unquote resolved, um, I just didn't want to be ahead of such a big news item that could have frankly gone either way. And that really sets up the stage for what we're going to talk about today in the first session, and it's just some mistakes to avoid. These are going to be things that I think a lot of us probably know, or they won't be surprising, but I think it's a really good idea to, to talk about it. It's one of my favorite sessions to do, really, because I always say that if we can just control the mistakes we make, stop doing things that tend to have you lose money, then we're on the road to actually making some wins. And so it's always a good reminder and uh, maybe a good time for self-reflection as we go through any of these and, and others that you look at yourself and go, you know what, I can be guilty of that or, you know, yeah, that sounds like me or I didn't think about that. But really take it to heart because it, it is important. And again, as we really plan on doing these trades year in and year out, again, not making the basic mistakes is going to be a very, very important first step. So I think it's a, uh, a good class to open up the year with. And then in the next session today, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one that I'm going to have. So it should be interesting in that regard. Um, and so we'll start that one at 2.45. Also, a little programming note here. We're going to uh, change the schedule around a little bit since we really have a significant international base of members we're going to do some classes early in the morning, uh, early in the morning my time here on the West Coast. And that way it's uh, in, in the evening for the folks over in uh, Australia and Asia, and then also it's later in the day, but a workable time for people in Europe. So we're gonna try that and we'll, we'll kind of monkey around the times to get it just right, but you'll see some of that in the uh, programming. I uh, told Morris, since I'm always up early anyway, it doesn't matter what time they are for me, I'm happy to do that. So I'll be the one doing the morning sessions to start with. So uh, the question comes in, what do I consider early? Uh, we're usually up a little bit before 4 a.m. here. And so I think no matter what time zone you're in, 4 a.m. is kind of early. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's start talking about some of these uh, more common mistakes and, and uh, get through it. So first off, a, a real quick reminder on, on how quickly things can change. You know, Russell hit 880 here recently. I was watching it, and I almost you know wasn't paying much attention for the two weeks that we were off. And when I and I came back and looked at that, I thought, is that right? Can it possibly be up there? But it certainly has made a significant move, I'd say stronger than the rest of the market. The, the index has really performed uh, strongly. And then the VIX, volatility in general, relentless in its desire and commitment to stay low. I mean, we're, we're at a point in time here where we talk about volatility a lot, but we see that even with so many unknowns out there, um, it continues to just be painfully low. But hey, that's okay. You've got to recognize, understand the, uh, the market conditions and trade the market that we have. So uh, I did definitely want to point that out. And then there's other things that are going on right now that make new trades or the possibility of new trades quite interesting. We have the fiscal cliff behind us. And I put a couple question marks because in my humble opinion, they really didn't do much but kicked the whole thing down the uh, road a little bit further. Yes, we got some new taxes for certain folks, but uh, as far as resolving anything? I don't really think so. 
we had the debt ceiling. I'm calling it part two of the saga that started a year and a half ago. And I think anybody that was with us or trading the market in general remembers what happened in um, August a year and a half ago where, you know, the debate uh, went on and on and on. And finally, at the last possible minute, they raised the ceiling. But the S&P downgrade occurred. The market really got slammed. Volatility shot through the roof. It was the the perfect recipe for disaster. So, you know, we have that here uh, coming up. I've heard uh, anything from the middle of February to the first part of March is when something's going to happen in that area. And if you're following the news at all, the stage is set for a lot of drama and a lot of fist fights. So th that's another thing. And then we have the ongoing uh, sequestration is still looming. You know, that was the part of the uh, budget cuts that were supposed to automatically kick in. And like I say, when they re resolved, quote unquote, the fiscal cliff, they, they attacked the revenue side, but did nothing really as far as the spending side. So we've got a lot of a lot of events, I guess, is the point that we're looking at here and we want to be aware of. Let's get into some of the the common mistakes to avoid and um, we'll, we'll get into it. And I like to say, especially for the new folks, it's a great time to learn from others. You know, there's a time when odds are a lot of the mistakes that can be made have been made. And so if we can talk about them beforehand, then you're at least aware of them. You can know how to step around some of those potholes. Um, so we're going to go through some of the very most common ones. Uh, they're ones that personally I think are rather timeless and universal. Universal in the sense that everybody tends to uh, fall victim to these at some point in time. And timeless because they're always there. And uh, they continue to be made over and over again by new and experienced traders. So here we go. Trade size. And this is likely the number one mistake. Sometimes you can find that when you have successes, it bolsters the confidence and may get into a situation of overconfidence. And as that occurs, you start piling on more and more. Instead of being more structured in your plan, realizing and, and remaining remain humble about the fact that the market wants to and usually does beat those trying to play. And so again, discipline around maintaining your trade size and aware of the trade size around what may be a certain volatility situations or things like that. Very, very important. I make the point here, look for reasons why the trade might fail and what the potential damage could be. And that's an interesting one because, you know, I do talk to a lot of folks and as we're going through uh, various conversations, I'll say, well, let's really add up what your exposure is at this point in time. And often I'm surprised that they don't really fully grasp the significance of the exposure that's there. And so, again, you want to make sure you're understanding your trades. You want to look for the reasons why they might fail. That will also help you prepare on what to do if it starts to fail. So it kind of is uh, not only an end game, but also it's going to help you develop a plan as things evolve and unroll in front of you. And then also the comment at the bottom here, remember to save buying power for the needed adjustments. You need to have, have those reserves there for a couple reasons. One, if the trade starts to break down, well, you may need to have some firepower available to adjust and, and get it healthy again. Or even worse yet, you might have a trade that really is running flawlessly and things are looking great. But if you run out of buying power to continue that trade, it's almost more tragic because you have the opportunity right in front of you to have maybe those w one or two really big winners that come our way, but you have to close out because you didn't have enough buying power. So really, really watch the trade size. Let me hit the chat real quick. Okay, so the question comes in uh, from Greg, and it's it's a very, very common question as far as what percent should you have set aside for adjustments? And I'm going to give a kind of a little bit of a wishy-washy answer to that uh, from the point of view that it really kind of depends on the account size itself. But I would say this. If you're just starting up, I would, keep, I would start off with at least 50% uh, available 
go ahead and go through a couple cycles of the trades, get comfortable with how much these adjustments for the kinds of trades and the size of the trades that you have, how much those adjustments cost. And then you can get a better finger on how much you really should have set aside. It also definitely uh, is a factor if you're trading in a Reg T style account, so say an IRA or a standard margin uh, investment account or a portfolio margin account. But um, for, for the guys that are new, start by keeping more than you think you need and then as time goes by, you'll, you'll develop a little bit of an extra feel. But um, it's not uncommon, uh, I'd say, for, for me or some of the others to keep a, a 50% um, additional uh, buying power. And what, what's also interesting is that with some of the styles of trades, as you move towards expiration, the trade cost actually becomes a little bit more. And so that number will definitely, the percentage will definitely get smaller. But it's almost by design. It, you understand what and why things are going on and, and working with that. But again, just for a nice round number, starting off with keep 50% behind, see what that does for you, and then you can alter it to your, your size of trade and type of trades that you have on. So the next uh, common mistake I have is um, over trading and over adjusting. So first off, it could be just the number of trades. Um, where all of a sudden you, you have piled on to several different months, a whole bunch of trades, which interestingly enough, often start to look very, very similar. And so it, it's kind of a, another attribute of a common mistake I'll get to later, but um, just watch the number of trades that you have. I point out trade concentration, too many uh, trades in one month or too many opened at the same time into different months. So again, you wanna be, um, somewhat diversified from the point of view where you don't want to open 10 new trades all at once in a three or four month period where they're all going to kind of look and act the same. You know, after this nice run up that we've had with the wrestle, it maybe gives a good opportunity for opening a particular trade that wouldn't have existed when the wrestle was down at 830, which was only a couple of weeks ago. And so again, watch the concentration of those trades. And then the final point that addresses more the over adjusting is with the higher volatilities, the market is going to jump around more. And so you want to be, um, you, you want to follow the guidelines for using the DV ratios and uh, balancing out of the trade, but you don't want to just blindly let the numbers dictate what you're doing. And what I mean by that is you maybe want to really look at the chart. What's the, the directional trend? You know, is this adjustment a good one to make? Um, should I perhaps consider making a half size adjustment instead of doing a full up adjustment? Because what's going to happen is you wind up where you adjust one way on one given day. And then the next day or next couple days, you wind up adjusting right back the opposite direction. So that whipsaw gets a hold of you and all of a sudden you're really just treading water and the only thing that's growing is the amount of commissions that you're paying. So it's a, it's a good thing to be watching for and one that frankly we, we talk about a lot in the, uh, the daily case studies and it's almost like you have to go through that and watch and understand and um, start to develop a, a better feeling for it before you really have the confidence of, of knowing which adjustments you should be making and which ones you shouldn't. We, we started a, uh, a little comparison a while back of just blindly doing more of a computer program exclusively on the DV ratio and that's it versus one where I was looking at the ratio but also looking a little bit more closely at the charts and going through why even though at certain times an adjustment might be made, why I might elect not to take that adjustment and the rationale behind it. And so we'll, we'll be doing a lot of that this year. But um, again, it is a very common mistake where we have a, an over-adjusting phenomena take place. And it's, it's a very common one, especially for uh, uh, new members. So next I have the scratched record trading. And what I mean by this is making the same trade the same way over and over, regardless of the actual market conditions. And this sort of gets back to some of the other ones. You, you, you start to see how these things kind of blend together, where say you have a trade, things are going well, you get confidence, you say it wins again, <clears throat> you get more confidence, so on and so forth. And you just 
become a little bit blinded by the fact that the market conditions really have changed. And so it's important to always step back and, and understand why you're implementing a trade and not just doing it out of a force of habit. And it's interesting, too, because this is a very common iron condor trader downfall. In fact, any of you have been out there had traded the typical and traditional iron condor strategy of selling the 10 deltas at a 45-day period, trying to get your credit. It works, it works, it works, and then it just blows up. And, and that's, that's really what I mean here by the scratch record trading. If things dramatically change in the market, make sure that the strategies that you're implementing are really developed and, and working with those market conditions and not just working the same way they did the last couple of times when the trade actually worked. The example there on the brick, you know, the different kind of ratio you may want to be using. And definitely uh, one, of, one of the biggest factors is just the volatility where they are and what that really means. Chart blindness. I thought of this one where I, I was probably the most guilty of it, of anyone I knew, in that when you're looking at the charts, it's almost easy to come up with something every single time that justifies or validates your personal opinion. If you think the market's going up, you look at the chart, you'll find out some reason why you can say, yes, that really is happening. Going down the same type of thing. So what I think is really important is really be honest with yourself. Look at and, and see what the chart really is trying to show you and not see if you can find what you want to find, what you're looking for. I make the comment there where sometimes you look at the chart and go, I can't make any, any sense of this whatsoever. Just turn the thing upside down and look at it. And again, just look at for obvious things that might jump out at you that you maybe didn't notice the first time around. Because a lot of times they're there. And these can be support levels. They can be channels that you're um, trading in. It could be something as simple as a head and shoulders pattern or, or some other well-known, well-recognizable and followed type of pattern that for whatever reason you're just not seeing it for whatever reason. Uh, you'll see sometimes in the class I'll go ahead and I'll erase all of my uh, lines that I have on there, all of my notes, so on and so forth, get a clean chart, so to speak, so that I'm not distracted by all that busy work, all that graffiti that you know I can start adding into the charts as I'm trying to identify certain things. So again, a really important, and this plays right back to the, uh, the slide I was just on, where if you're going to want to start to minimize your over-adjusting, make sure you're looking at the chart and seeing that it really is telling you something that's going to help you make the decision around that adjustment. And again, I, I fault myself on this one where, oh, well, it was a couple years back. This market was moving up, and it moved up just continuously. And the whole time, I just was rationalizing why it's going to roll over. No, next month, it's going to roll over. And, of course, it never did. And so what that meant is that I missed a lot of opportunity to the upside simply due to my chart blindness. So now I come to the, the press and the analysts. And we, um, we were just overloaded these days by the instant opinions and the breadth of those providing those opinions that can be very uh, oh, confusing and misleading from the point of view that it's not uncommon to have two very well-spoken, clearly educated and capable people coming in presenting their assessment of what's going on. They'll be the exact opposite opinion, both of them spoken very well, very believable, and all of a sudden you're just confused and, and frozen by that. Worse yet, you might have a, uh, a slight concern or fear over a particular aspect of the market and a trade you're in, and then you hear somebody that kind of reinforces that, and immediately you take action because it just confirms your, your fear around that, and all of a sudden, after the fact, you realize, well, you kind of overreacted to the situation. And it was really ignited or exacerbated by the fact that some talking head on one of the news shows had something to say about a trade that you were already concerned about or, you know, the opposite is true, hopeful for. 
So, you know, I, I just guess on this one I'd say it's important to know what's going on. I follow the news quite closely. But when it comes to the amount of um, analyst input and, um, you know, directional uh, input that you're going to take from a third party on your screen, just be a little mindful of it. Know that that's going on. Uh, again, you don't want to ignore everything out there. But I think we all know that at least half the time, most of what you hear is exactly wrong. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, they're just like the rest of us trying to figure out the best they can. And while they may have more experience than a lot of folks, a lot of you uh, trading, the simple fact is they can misread things or the market changes on them just like it does the rest of us. The other thing, my, my final point on this one, is that you know they can flip-flop as quickly one direction as they uh, were taking off in the other. And so a lot of times, some of the input you get, there's no timeline associated with it. It, it may literally... Uh, be a big opinion change based on a recent event that, uh, that comes along. And, you know, there you are kind of blindly being led by uh, 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 an analyst who's just talking for the sake of, of talking, which is what they do. But at the end of it all, it really hasn't done much to help yet. So that's it. Let's, uh, let's keep 2013 mistake free <laughs> as best we can anyway. And uh, we'll uh, be o looking at opening up some new trades next week. Um, I probably won't do any tomorrow. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more around the reason for that. But um, we'll, we'll get kind of a clean slate here, um, start opening some trades and managing the kinds of trades and the account sizes that we have with things that are prudent for the current market environment. So let me go ahead and shut this recorder down. Uh, I'll start up at 2.45 with the next session. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one here, so we'll have a question and answer, and uh, you guys can watch if you uh, elect to. I'll talk to you again soon.